So, what's your name? I cannot remember. I suppose, in a sense, I have no name. Tosakuni no Shoujo took me by surprise and reminded me about how a simple fantasy story can be all it takes to capture that feeling of something new. For the first time in a long while, this is a series that I had never heard about until recently. Usually I find people online talking about certain series or get recommended vids that, while inform me about some new series I'd be interested in, I drop it pretty quickly. How I've never seen anything from or about this series. At least with something like Katana Gatari. I mistook it at first for an anime wallpaper, but only realizing that it was actually a series that I would eventually enjoy. So, how did I find this? Well, I was going through my anime list and this just caught my eye for some reason. So, I went into this 100% blind. I had no expectations, no thoughts on what this would be like, just nothing. And honestly, after watching it, this film, I have to say it is something that I do not regret coming into. Based on the 53 chapter series, Tozukuni no Shoujo is about two companions, a nameless outsider that is simply referred to as Teacher, and a little girl who he tends to by the name of Shiva. The story unravels the lost histories between the two in a world that neglects both of them. There's not a whole lot of world building in this, and most of the dialogue really isn't all too important, and the film itself doesn't really have any real big achievements to reach. Most stuff you would associate with fantasy stories, especially nowadays, are not really found here, at least not found in a similar manner. Rather, Tozukuni no Shoujo is a bittersweet yet very beautiful story that was a pleasant surprise to stumble across. And while the film doesn't have a whole lot to cling on to when comparing to other stories in the genre, its biggest strength, I'd argue, is what we see and what we hear. The film itself was animated by Studio Wit, most notably for their work on The Great Pretender, Ancient Magus Bride, and After the Rain, among other works. And it's easy to tell the people behind it gave their all. And before I go on, I actually did take a look at the manga afterwards, and did a bit of digging. Pretty much, this story does deviate in many ways story-wise from the original manga, and the film as well as a continuation of the OVA from 2019, which I did not see prior to this. So, as a retelling, it doesn't work. But... As both a standalone film and a focus to give more of an understanding of the atmosphere, as well as the world the two characters live in, I honestly do say that it both works fine enough and is an interesting case. The environments we see in the story all give off an aesthetic of a storybook. The characters are all animated with detail, frame by frame. The colors have a vibrancy to them, even when the palette is more muted. The music and sound design also helps sell the quiet, lonely atmosphere between the two leads, and... Speaking of the two leads, the actors go a long way with these characters. In the Japanese, they're played by Takahashi Rie and Fukuyama Jun, and... <laughs> However, in the dub, they're played by Sera Wiedenhaft and Gary Furlong, which... I think the accent they're supposed to be doing is Irish? I'll have to get back to you on that. I apologize. It was much more difficult than I expected. Oh, I'm sorry. I've just never seen black pancakes before, so I couldn't help laughing. However, in various ways, the story very much focuses on a show-don't-tell direction. 
In a number of scenes, not everything about what is going on is said, at least outright, and honestly, it's commendable. If anything, I'd say that, personally, it makes it rewatchable all the more. The first time around, I'll admit, much of what it was trying to show, I'm not too sure that either I caught or got. But hey, when I get around to watching it for a second or third time, I imagine I'll better understand what the story was conveying. A closer comparison I can make is the video game Gris. Playing through the first time, what impressed me was the prominent art direction and creative liberties with the levels, but once I realized it was a story representing grief, the levels had more intention to them. There was more meaning behind them, and the art of the story to me in that game helped it immensely. And speaking of which, I really want to talk about the art and animation in this. So from doing a little digging into it, apparently Studio Wit initially an animated in the work, which I assume they're talking about with the 2019 animation, but will also contribute it to this. But apparently Studio Wit initially in animating the work wanted to test out a type of animation that uses a new expression technique in its creation. And what we got was a film that uses different textures with its animation. Sometimes it's easy to tell the textures, like with the characters I can kind of tell that they utilize watercolors, other times, I can see that they would utilize prominent and bold line work to help sell the more rustic atmosphere, not unlike a storybook. Sometimes I'd even argue some of the sequences look like animating with black and white charcoal. It's a very creative film visually, and I can't imagine how long this took them, especially with a different style of animation. I mean, if I didn't know any better, I'd swear this would be an original film done by a content creator. Next to the visuals are the audio, which the film takes advantage of silence and ambiance and utilizes it really well for setting the tone and atmosphere. From a more mundane tone to a more morbid atmosphere, the music plays a major part as well. There's a simplicity to the music that just fits with this film. Excellent news. If you find anything interesting, do let me know. Hi, Lena. As for the characters, while this film does deviate from the original story, their personalities are indeed kept in check. As the film goes on, their relationship, which is not unlike that of a father and daughter, honestly just feels right. They care about one another, and it's not hard to tell. You can feel their connection, and while this film has nowhere near the amount of characters in the manga, for what it needs to tell, the characters are fine enough as is. This film to me was honestly a major surprise. I didn't expect to come across a dark fantasy story that was more in line with that of something like a grim fairy tale, basically. But it's honestly a nice change of pace. As much as I love a lot of anime series, it's easy to categorize so many of them under specific routes of storytelling, especially nowadays when a majority of the series that get adapted are either isekai, rom-coms, or shonen battle. Even if they got their value individually, I do think that it can get stale in one way or another. That's the downside of being exposed to so many series and films over the years. Even if the series itself is good and people say that it actually is good and it's a legitimately good series, I'm not really going to be into it if it just doesn't click. Like honestly, before doing this video, I was initially thinking about making a script on Chainsaw Man after getting told about how good it was constantly, but I bailed when I just thought it was boring. And you can be up in arms about that as much as you want, it doesn't change the fact that that's how I feel about it. Tosukuni no Shoujo is just a nice change of pace for me right now. Do I think it's perfect? No, I doubt it's something for everyone, and I imagine me saying something like I didn't like Chainsaw Man is gonna push certain people's buttons in response to this, despite that. I mean, at the end of the day, if you're gonna take a look at what I discuss here or not, that's ultimately your call. Even though I make videos discussing and recommending different stuff to check out, I mean, I really don't care either way. Like. Because I'll just be enjoying what I want and going about my day. With this film, there's not a whole lot in the grand scheme of things, but honestly, I kind of feel like that's part of its appeal. 
It's bittersweet, morbid, yet a heartwarming story. The animation is absolutely remarkable, and the characters are few but memorable and interesting, and overall, it's a pretty balanced time. I don't know. Maybe people disagree. Maybe people don't care. But me personally? I think sometimes the simple beauty of a simple fantasy is all that I need.